Good afternoon, <clears throat> good morning, good evening to some of you depending on where you are. And I welcome you to today's broadcast. If you are joining, invite others to join while you are joining. Invite others to join. While you are joining, invite others to join. Very, very important. Very, very important. Um, because there is something, like I said yesterday, there is something that I am, or I observed. There is something I observed with regards to the UN directive which they issued to Nigeria and that observation is what I am here to talk about the observation is where what I am here to talk about and I have uh, also checked that news that news is actually coming from the United Nations but when was that directive issued? And why is Nigeria not following that directive or respecting that directive issued by the UN? That is exactly what we want to talk about here. And before we proceed, I want you to understand uh, that we want to find out if, in, if UN is like a toothless dog or if un is that dog that barks without doing anything because that is exactly what i want to i want us to talk about and the activities of vanguard newspaper the activities of vanguard newspaper because if you come to think about it if you remember when our comrade Ima Powerful granted interview with Channels TV. Nigeria find Channels TV with a whooping amount of, I think, was it uh, 10 million or 1 million? I don't know. They, I know they were fined for interviewing an IPOB member. So, but uh, what I, I don't understand is that Vanguard they are always you know in the forefront of reporting this news coming from the united nation to nigeria why why now because the reason why i am actually talking about it is because this news coming from the united nation it was not a news that came today this news was supposed to be on the public domain since April 2022 because it the same news came last year October the same news was given to Nigeria last year October 27th of, of, of October 2021 this same news came but what made this one different was the previous news came with the names of the perpetrators while this current news came with only the names of those that they they acknowledged that they were the ones who reported the news to the or who filed the the application in the united nation now let me show you something that i am talking about let me show you something that I am talking about because I I know I have it. If you look at this, I want you to look at this page that I am going to show you. I am going to read it out for you. And while you are reading it, you are after I am done reading it, probably I will make it available to you. Because um, when we brought this news ye um, yesterday, a lot of people came with their different opinion you know of course the infiltrators in the likes of auto criminals 
they were there ranting of course you know their activities their activities is only to try to make people believe that they are the ones in charge and calling the short instead of them trying to do anything that is profitable to this struggle but they are not doing anything profitable to the struggle rather they are bringing set back towards the struggle by when people are protesting they call for sit at home you know when people are protesting they call you to go inside because they are working for your enemy so now let me bring this to you before we go to the other one it is right behind me if you look uh if you look at my screen you will find the the news that i am about to bring to you it is in behind me and i am not going to bring it in front i am not going to bring it to the front until i'm done reading it i will bring it to the front when i am done reading it but i want you to Pay very good attention to it. Pay very good attention. Let's go there. This is on the 27th October 2021. The same news that I read to you yesterday. When it had arrived on a public domain. 27th of October 2021. I think I should actually present it to be a little bit smaller so that it will be in front of me let me bring it in front yeah just one moment i am not going to take much of our time the next 45 minutes to an hour i am done here if it is going to be up to that time First of all, let me show you the date of this news. For us to see whether indeed UN is a toothless dog that just bark. Or whether indeed after this news, Guterres visited Nigeria, they gave him bribe to keep quiet. <laughs> uh, don't don't uh, misunderstand me. Uh, that is exactly what I am trying to figure out because what we are doing here is trying to figure out something we are trying to figure out something I brought this news out and uh, it is obvious that I have to figure it out I, I came with this news if you look at this news here right in front of you I want you to pay your attention to this Pay your attention to where you see. Um, okay, I have. I did this. I did this. I I lighted. Let me zoom the. Let me zoom it. Bring it closer. because I just highlighted it good what's going on there are too many things here um I just brought it closer I want you to focus on the date that I am showing you here. That's why I am taking time to position it. Focus on this date. Before we read. Before we begin to read. Are you seeing that date that I am showing you? That date on the 27th of October 2021. Are you seeing the date? Of course you can see it because uh, myself let me check if I have to remove the highlight okay let me remove the highlight and see if we are able to see the date I have removed the highlight okay you can see of course 27th 
or do I need to zoom it more for you to be able to see the date? Do I have to zoom it more so that you will be able to see the date? Because I can see the date myself. It is 27th of October 2021. Now let us read the news before we progress to the reason why I brought this one to. Because the one I presented to you was the one that was presented yesterday, the 24th, the 24th of July. 2022 now let's go to that news before vanguard i hope you are you are seeing it vanguard vanguard you saw vanguard here right this is vanguard now i hope we are coming out clear are we coming out clear or are we cracking because uh, if we are not coming out clear Please inform us, inform me, let me try to do something. Are we coming out clear? Please somebody confirm for me if we are coming out clearly. So that we will know if we are going to proceed. Okay, thank you very much, Okechuku Cheka and Okechuku Okoye. Uh, thank you very much. We are coming out clearly. Now, let us now see this news. The United Nations on the 27th of October 2021, when this news landed by Chimobi Waiwu and Steve Oko, who were the writers of this news. Now, the United Nations UN has issued urgent appeal to both the Nigeria and Kenya government demanding immediate stoppage of any torture or violation of rights committed against the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. I want you when I am reading this news kindly give me your attention so that you will see the similarity between this news and the one they wrote yesterday. Because we are trying to do something. Now we are trying to expose something here. Now demanding I think I, I scroll too much. Demanding Hold on. Demanding the immediate stoppage of any torture or violation of rights committed against the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazen Namdekano. We continue to read. United Nations also warned of serious consequences if the allegations of torture and violation of the, the fundamental human rights against the IPOB leader were confirmed. This came as the IPOB yesterday, being the 26th of October 2021, that is what I am referring to told the federal government of Nigeria that the alleged illegal rendition of its leader, Mazen Namdekano, will not weaken the group but will rather destroy Nigeria. IPOB disclosed this in reply to the statement credited to the senior special assistant media to President Mohamed Buhari Malami or Malam Garbashehu, that conviction of Mazen Namdekano will lead to the end of IPOB agitation. The UN intervention followed a petition to the UN by Kano's brother, Kanon Takano. I want you to underline that place as well here. Underline it. The UN intervention followed a petition to the UN by Kano's brother, Kanon Takano, and his special counsel, Mr. Aloy Ejimako. Remember this paragraph. I want just remember this line. 
so that we will use it you know to do what we are about to do UN's own urgent appeal to Nigeria and Kenya, according to the statement by Canon Takano, have been transmitted to both countries since August 20 to, since August 26, and the acknowledgement received from the Nigeria Permanent Mission to the United Nations in New York on September 17th. The statement made available to Vanguard Tuesday read in part, in a in particular the said urgent appeals state in the part that the united nation is alarmed by the alleged torture and the ill treatment by mr kano being subjected to during his illegal custody in kenya i don't know if you are seeing what i am reading of course you are seeing what i am reading now let us continue it further read if if confirmed this allegation would constitute prima facie violation of fundamental rights including the right not to be arbitrarily arbitra arbitrarily or what um i be trial really deprived of liberty and the absolute and the non derogable prohibition of torture and other ill treatment under the international covenant on political and civil rights iccpr i read this news yesterday but that one carries the date of yesterday i want you to not to forget but let me now read the places where there is something different between this one and the one of yesterday so that you will eventually know that this news is not i am not reading what i read for you yesterday now let's continue the allegation in the case of mr kano raise a serious uh, violation of international human rights law and may cause imperable damage to his life or personal integrity which we believe warrant prompt attention in this regard we are considering the public express our concern in this case in the near future believing that the wider public should be informed about the implication of this allegation for enjoyment and exercise of human rights in kenya and nigeria i also remember this path very very well when i was reading this news yesterday any public expression or concern in this regard will indicate that we never been in contact with your excellency government to clarify issues in question let me read this place again let me read this place again because we are looking for something to use to judge united nation and as 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 and the activities of some outlet and those who are involved so now any public expression of concern in the regard in this regard will indicate that we have been in contact with your excellency government to clarify the issue okay any public expression which means in this regard public expression is what we are doing right now I, I i i i know that those who will understand will understand public expression is what we are doing right now which means this news is made public and is available accessible in the public domain which that which states that the united nation they have you know they have communicated to their, the one they called his excellency 
in Asorok to clarify the issues in question. Are you paying attention? They have, you know, contacted their excellency to clarify the issue in question. Now let us proceed. While awaiting a reply, while awaiting a reply, we urge that all necessary interim measures to be taken to pre prevent any e e irreparable damage to the life of a person integrity of, mi of Mr. Kano, hold the alleged violation and prevent their reoccurrence and in the event that the investigation support or suggest allegation to be correct they ensure to ensure the uh, the accountability of any person responsible of the alleged violation on why Kano's brother decided to seek united nation intervention the statement sta said following the extraordinary rendition of my older brother mazenam de kano i undertook a number of urgent steps within the realm of the international community particularly in britain and the united nations i worked quietly with my brother's special counsel alloy ejimako and the b bind mans my brother's always bind man sorry my brother's lawyers in britain on a host of muscular intervention aimed at presenting my brother's case to the international community and facilitating the his unconditional release and bringing the culprit of the, his illegal rendition to account this in this uh, inter intervention we are not m made known to the general public because the implicable rules especially that of uh, the united nations require them to be kept confidential for six days i also read this yesterday the 24th of july 2022 but this one i am reading was written on the october 27th of october on the 27th of october 2021 so what well, the reason why i am reading this one in details is for me to see if there is any analogy between these two and uh, what is going on if this new if this directive was issued by the united nation in 2021 and after that there was some a visit by the chief secretary or what do you i don't know his position and uh, guterres mr guterres visit to nigeria so and we are also going to compare to see the visit of that man to nigeria what it has done to this directive if it has corrupted this directive or is promoting this directive we're going to find out but let us continue to read. Why are waiting a reply? All necessary. Okay. I think I have read this, uh, that part. This intervention where those six days just expired. I read this yesterday. So let me jump in. There is a place I want us to. The UN letter to Nigeria and Kenya over Namdekano was jointly signed by Niels Melzer, special reporter on torture and other cruel, inhuman, and de degrading treatment or punishment. Mariam Estrada Castillo, vice chair of the working group on arbitrary detention and the tar on the bank chair rapporteur uh, rapporteur of the working group on enforcement on forced or volu involuntary involuntary disappearances okay so involuntary disappearances which is mm, what happened to mazen namdekano 
Now, other signatory include Tlaleng Mofokeng, Special report, Rapporteur on the right of everyone to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. Fernand de Varenis, Special Rapporteur on the Minority Issues, and the Fionu, Fio, Fionuala Ni Ayolin, Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedom while countering terrorism. Okay? Now, don't forget about while countering terrorism. Because we need to use it. Because when Guterres come to, came to Nigeria, I rather talked about the issue of terrorism. We want to find out if Nigeria um, government convinced them that we are terrorists. So we are going to find out and we are going to take these questions back to all these names written here and these names written here i am going to copy them and make them available that when we are tweeting we will actually use those names in order in our tweets to find out if they are the people who just speak in order to please the people without taking any action that is one of the things that we must do one of the things that we must do we are going to make those names available so but let us continue to read the attention of global family of indigenous people of biafra ipob ably led uh, by our great leader mazen nam de kano has been drawn to the ranting and the laughable and laughable statement from garba shehu the SS, uh, SSA media to president saying that the extraordinary rendition of IPOB leader will lead to the end of IPOB agitation. We are surprised at the level of clueless and the ignorance being displayed by Garba Shehu about the operation of IPOB. We therefore want to assure him and his co travelers that the extraordinary rendition of our union duma zenam the kano will rather destroy nigeria and not ipob Maram, malam shehu garba should be ashamed of himself for serving a government that harbor kidnappers and also take part in kidnapping people even from outside nigeria by kidnapping and rendition Renditioning Mazen Nam the Kano, Nigeria has committed international crime and must not go unpunished. The world doesn't need any further proof that IPOB is a peaceful movement. The kidnap of its leader by Nigeria government is a crime that must be punished. So, by this singular violation of international law, Nigeria is already in mess, but instead of admitting the, the obvious fact, its officials its officials are busy playing to the gallery however very soon the mastermind of the heinous crime will be rounded up and handed over to the international criminal court icc for prosecution ipob is not a pushover movement and we cannot be intimidated just very soon our oppressors will be taught a lesson by icc in the language they understand IPOB remain non-violent organization but has been the victim of high handed handedness of the Nigeria authorities. The wicked the wicked Nigeria security agents have continued their secret genocide against Biafra agitators, but they will pay for their atrocities very soon. We want Garba Shehu. Mungono of the Nigeria in Intelligence Agencies Agency and the Attorney General of Nigeria, Boba Kamalami, to stop displaying their ignorance of international law, 
they should equally stop the media trial of our leader whose matter is already pending in court of law the whole world know knew the whole world knew them and understood that volani has destroyed nigeria and the world will do, will not join them to call ipop a terrorist organization vanguard news nigeria vanguard news nigeria now there is okay this was africa this was all africa bringing us uh, that uh, vanguard news so that is the way it is now let us go to this one of yesterday this is the one of yesterday i hope you are seeing it correctly you are it is actually you know showing you let me bring it closer and smaller so that we will, we will be able to see the <coughs> i want to show us the, the the date of the one of yesterday where is the date and i am going to read this one of yesterday so that we will continue i'm going to read it this is not let me see if i would be able to find the date correctly because the one i saw is not the date of yesterday okay this one was the one that surfaced yesterday it was the one that surfaced yesterday but i can see oh i think i got the wrong one do i have the wrong one but this is the news that i was reading yesterday okay while we continue to read it uh, maybe i will find where i saw that uh, of the date because this is not the one this is a different news now let us read i want to bring it uh, closer because this one is not there is a date of october 26 2021 here and uh, yesterday the one i read yesterday the writer was who and uh, in this regard in this regard this uh, vanguard um, was talking about you know the canon takano alloy ejimako who reported uh, this news to the United Nations and uh, there is a, a news coming out of Twitter yesterday also from Aloy Ejimako before we come to this 
news. Well, before we come back to the yesterday news, if I if I find that one of yesterday, before I will come back to it, because I think if I close it, let me find out if I closed the one of yesterday instead. Let me find out if I closed the one of yesterday and chose the opposite one instead. Hold on for me one minute. Okay, now let us read the current one the current one let us read this one before we go to this current one i want us to touch on let's talk about the old one first this old one talked about all these things the united nation threatened that they are going to do to nigeria threatened that they are going to do to nigeria Remember this news and this case was filed in the United Nations and the United Nations acknowledged this uh, complaint and they, met, they said they will actually you know, investigate it. And they, if so many of you may remember, if you, if you will remember that this after this news that summed up into October 27, 2021, I don't know, I can't remember which date, when Guterres, I hope many of you must remember when the Guterres visited Nigeria. Is it Anthony Guterres? Uh, let me find out when he visited Nigeria. Let's find out before, because we are trying to do something here. Secretary General Antonio Guterres makes first visit to Nigeria on the 3 May, I think the 3rd of May. He visited Nigeria on the 3rd of May 2022. I hope so many of you are still aware of that. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, after this news, he visited Nigeria, and after visiting Nigeria, this directive that was issued by the United Nations last year, uh, which is on the 27th of October, after that, the issue was dead, died off. And instead of him addressing the issue that he came to Nigeria to do, what he came to do is to sell us to start reintegrating terrorists into our society back. Of course, so many of you remembered his statement when he visited Nigeria, which I think I made a position on it when he visited Nigeria. And I believe he visited Nigeria on a note also to investigate these things that is going on in Nigeria. But rather, when he came, Nigeria is really capable of corrupting any individual. So when he came, I believe that he did not carry out this, you know, his work that he came to do in Nigeria. Rather, he started supporting Boko Haram and terrorists. And we are talking about a man called Antonio Guterres. Because if you look at his activities of when he came to Nigeria, he said that we should start reintegrating those who become terrorists somehow into back into the society, that reintegration is the only thing that will curb the menace of terrorism in Nigeria. And ever since he said that, if you look at what is going on today, you will find out that Nigeria has been you know reintegrating these terrorists without even 
you know, they give these terrorists benefit. That, uh, you know, to the extent I began to ask myself, does it mean that you must be a terrorist before you begin to get any benefit from Nigeria and the Nigeria economy? So, I believe that this was exactly what happened. After he came to Nigeria, this case died off. And now let me go ahead and read this one that I have at my disposal. There is two of them. There is two of them. Or there are two of them, rather. There are two of them. Which is the one filed. Okay, the current one was filed by Bruce Finn. The current one was filed by Bruce Finn. And now, that current one, there is something I also, you know, figured out in that current one. Now, I am going to make a lot of things clear and bring a lot of things to light. Now, let us read this one of, first of all, where is it? Let me bring it to the screen first. Before we go down to the one I read yesterday. Let's bring this one to the screen. Pay attention. Pay attention to this one. Listen attentively. Fen Murray Ejimako commended over UN's order to release Namdekano. This is the latest of the United Nations, you know, it was actually made available here on the 23rd of July, 23rd of July, 2022, 23rd of July, 2022. Of course, I believe you can see the date that I am showing you right in front of your screen. Are you seeing the date that I have highlighted? Right in front of your screen, you will see it. Now, let us read this one. Before we go back to the one I read yesterday. Nande Kanu's younger brother, Kanu Takanu, weekend commanded the United Nations for ordering Nigeria to release his brother with immediate effect. Now, let me find out which athlete the whistler this news outlet is whistler commanded the united nations for ordering nigeria to release his brother with immediate effect nam de kanu is the leader of the indigenous people of biafra ipop kanu takanu further commanded kanu's international legal council mr bruce finn and prof murray as well as his special counsel barrister Aloy Ejimako for their collaborative effort that led to the order. Kanonta, Kanonta disclosed this through his verified Twitter handle. According to him, the Kano family thanks the UN for commending, condemning the extraordinary rendition of hashtag Mazenam the Kano and the directing Nigeria to release and compensate him. We also thank at Bruce Finn, ESQ, and Prof. Rachel Morai for initiating and leading this effort, and Barrister Aloy Ejimako for working closely with them. Bruce Finn had Tuesday, had Tuesday in a tweet shared by Barrister Ejimako announced the resolution of the UN on Kano's matter. He tweeted, I just received opinion by working group on arbitrary detention of UN human rights council demanding immediate release, unconditional, immediate unconditional release of Mazen Namde Kano and repatriation for serial violation of international guaranteed rights by Nigeria and Kenyan government. Stand by 
stand by for full opinion. Ejimako, in a cre reaction, commended breakthrough. According to him, kudos to my colleagues, Bruce Finn, at Bruce Finn ESQ, in bracket, and all that quietly labored in achieving this crushing victory for Mazen Namdekano. Congratulations to hashtag Mazen Namdekano, MNK. Kano is being detained in the custody of the DSS and tried over alleged jumping bail, running a proscribed group and treason. A high court in Abia State earlier ruled in a favor of Kano that he did not jump bail. The case was situated by Barrister Ejimako. Okay. It is not, they did not make it um, the news in details because there were, there were a lot of things. There were a lot of things that was actually involved with this news. And I know that ever since this thing, this thing is supposed to come on the media on April, on April. So there is something that uh, I also want to talk about here. This news was made available on April and it was not released to the media on April 2022. This one that I just read. It was supposed to be available on the public domain on April 2022. Why the delay? Why the delay? Because this is the delay. I can understand that delay of this particular news coming out in public domain. Because when we see this type of news in public domain and we continue to actually promote this news that today if not that we bring it on the media outlet we, we, we are not in going to carry it just like uh, if you know there are many tv channels that carried it not only newspaper after my broadcast yesterday because probably they wanted to confirm if this was you know accurate information because a lot you remember we are infiltrated when you bring info, information to the public domain, people will, will begin to tell you it is a old news, which is going to mis mislead the public. And the one I read yesterday was not actually the one that is supposed to be, you know, that is the latest one. This is the latest one that I just read. You know, the latest one is this one I read. The one I read yesterday was a news that was made available on the... 27th of October 2021, which after that Guterres visited Nigeria, that one died off. So with this one that was filed by Bruce Finn, and we want to uh, you know inform all the stakeholders to be you know to follow up with this one to make sure it does not die off as the one of 2021 died off after the visit of Guterres to Nigeria because we don't know what next is going to happen with this one. The directive has been issued again. This is the second time this directive has been issued from the United Nations, which we supposed to follow it up to make sure that this directive is being carried out. But I don't know if the United Nations, whether there is somebody there that when this uh, cabal we have in Nigeria will call them, they will be complicit and begin to dance in the tone of these you know, cabals we have in Asorok. And another thing that I am here to say, so many people we are talking rubbish, just like the infiltrators that we have in our midst, talking about we criticizing Bruce Finn, that today Bruce Finn is the one who filed this thing. He was not the only one who filed it. And number two, we have the right to criticize Bruce Finn, he's our employee. So, why then are you holding other people accountable if you are not able to criticize them? He is our employee. If you ask him, he will understand that it is his duty to give us results. It is not his duty to come and be doing otherwise or issuing directive. All we need is a result from him because we are paying for these services that they are rendering and of course at the end of the day if we did not get results we will see them as incompetent people so 
we have the right to criticize him. Don't let anybody sweep you off your feet. Don't let criminals who are trying to siphon the money that is supposed to be used to carry out all these operations to sweep you off your feet with a propaganda. Because what they are doing right now is to make sure that they use propaganda to make sure that you are not following what is going on because they want you to believe that what is going on is that we criticize those who are supposed to work. We criticize you when you live where you're supposed to be and be where you are not supposed to be. We criticize you because we are IPOB. No fear, no favor. If you live where the wing is supposed to you know, play at and you leave it, you start interfering where you are, your power is not extended to. We caution you and we, if you take precaution, we'll call you back. If you did not take precaution, you become a forever enemy of IPOB. We are fighting a just cause and everybody is a suspect. That is the reason why we are proactive, making sure that everybody is covering their wings. In everywhere they are playing, they must concentrate and make sure that they are covering that area and not gossiping or doing any other thing otherwise are uh, outside of where they're supposed to be covering that is us ipob so go and tell the infiltrators that want to use all these things to act like they are doing something but, but you know whereas they are only looking for a way to make you believe that they know what they are doing to make you believe that they are the ones in charge but the only thing they are in charge of is your money it's trying to siphon your money use it to drive car in europe share it amongst themselves that is exactly what they are doing and i can assure you and make it categorically clear to you that those people you are giving your money you are enriching them because there is a lot of things that is you know that you people does not understand you know so when they come out to tell you we criticize Bruce Finn, we are not in denial of it. We criticize him. And if he come if Bruce Finn do something wrong again tomorrow, we will still criticize him. That is whom we are. And if Bruce Finn understands the freedom of speech, and Bruce Finn understand that he is the IPOB employee. So we have the right to do so. Do you get it now? So Go and get, tell that illiterate who is trying to use that to buy your face. Tell him that he does not know what he is talking about. Because we caution you, if you take precaution, you join us again. If you do not take precaution, we will see you as an enemy. That is how it is. That is number one. So, I am also calling on this formidable LEGO team that went to United Nations, led by Bruce Finn, to follow up this case because the, the previous one died off. It died off that this one may not die off. Of course, you know that Nigeria is, is, is actually, they, are, they, are, they can corrupt any structure. They can corrupt anything. So don't be surprised if they did not adhere to this and if they did not adhere to this we will see it that the united nation is not actually what we think they are they are not standing for human rights they just issue directive not following up following it up to see if it is indeed working or if it is if it is being carried out but because we have seen People come to Nigeria and after that, they got corrupted. Now, let us go back to the reason why I came here. Because when I gave that message of yesterday, the, the news that I read of yesterday was the one that was issued last year. Last year, 2021, which I saw again stating the same thing you know let me look for that one of yesterday
Okay, this one is also because there is a lot of people writing to UN. Uh, many people believe that it is only one <laughs> body writing to UN. And uh, because uh, when we talk about it, I don't want you to believe. In case if there is any money missing in IPOB, in IPOB wallet, I want you to know, writing to UN is not something that will cost uh, a lot of money. It is not something that costs a lot of money. Writing to UN is anybody can do it. If you wake up today, you can write to UN, and I am going to show you exact same, you know, reason why I say so. I don't know if you people know that the wife of Mazen Namdekano has been also writing to UN. Are you aware? Are you aware that the wife of our leader has been writing to UN? Because, uh, you know, I saw where people were talking about uh, money missing from the PayPal of IPOB. Uh, that is the reason why I am also here today. And uh, this news that we saw surfaced on the public domain yesterday, that surfaced, this news, it was not something that will cost $1 million. I want you to pay very good attention. Let us see what is going on. Because we are, you know... We we'll make sure that we make things available. But that is the reason why I acknowledge Bruce Fain because he did great this time around. I acknowledge him. He did great this time around. That is where I stand. Now let us go to the one our queen did. The first lady, Mazen Nam, the colonel's wife. Let us read her own news that she sent to the united nation because it is not only our lawyers that are writing to united nation or Kano's brother writing to united nation or there are other people writing to united nation are you paying attention i want you to pay very good attention let us read together so that we will understand because i want to clear up some some things here now let me make it to be visible to your screen yeah now visible to your screen see it's here are you paying attention do you see what i what you what is in front of you are you seeing what is in front of you that is it let us read it let us go there and read it This news happened April 11, 2022. Okay. Now, did you see the reason why I told you that most of this news we are supposed to be available on the April, on the April 2022? But because of the division between that is inside our Lego team. I don't know if it is inside our Lego team. I don't know who is bringing the division onto our Lego team or misunderstanding or misinterpretation or who is who in our Lego team. I don't know what is going on, but this news was supposed to be available on a public domain. The one of this Bruce Wayne even. On the April, the same day, this one of Mazen Nam the Colonel's wife was made available. It was supposed to be available on that date. Now, but we are going to deep to see what is actually causing the misunderstanding between the Lego team. Rendition Mazen Nam the Colonel's wife writes UN Security Council for probe. Are you paying attention? This is our queen, the first lady, by Steve Oko, the author of this article. Steve Oko, by Vanguard, 
Mrs. Uchechi Okukano, wife of the detailed leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, has, has petitioned the United Nations Security Council over the abduction, rendition, and the continued detention of her husband in breach of his fundamental right. Mrs. Kano is in... Is, Mrs. Kano, in the petition by the family's lawyer, Bruce Finn, seek the world today to also set up a commission of inquiries to investigate the alleged torture of her husband and punish all those involved. Okay, now that brings me to this, because this is actually the first time I am also seeing the one, or this one. And this is the same one we are talking about in two in that is that was made available yesterday. This was the one that he filed with Bruce Finn. That is the same one that is made available yesterday. So now that is the reason why I told you from the beginning of this that this news was supposed to be available on the public domain by this date that i highlighted on your left hand side in this place i highlighted on your left hand side i don't know if you are able to see it you are not seeing it properly let me find out if i will be able to make it bring it closer for you to see because now we want to find out exactly what is going on look at it i don't know if you are seeing the date on the April, this was supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to begin the promotion of this directive from the month of April. Three months ago, or uh, let's call it two months ago. We call it two months ago. I don't know if you are able to see the dates that I have highlighted here. I have highlighted this date. It's, it's supposed to be made available on this date. Let me try to. Are you seeing that date? April 11, 2022. That is when this news was supposed, that was made available. That was when it's supposed to trend. But we did not see it in a public domain. So, now the news we have it now but uh, however however we will actually make it to trend the way it's supposed to trend because it has been cold instead of doing what it's supposed to be doing it has been cold all this while and we will no longer allow it to be that cold the news must trend the news must trend. That is one thing that we should do. We must make the news to trend. Okay, now let us continue reading the news. Mrs. Uchechi Okukano, wife of Mazen Namde Kano, yeah, the one who wrote the news, who laid the complaint with the lawyer, Bruce Finn. United Kingdom Ambassador to the United Nations and the President of the United Nations Security Council, 760 United Nations Plaza. 760 United Nations Plaza. Repetition to the United Nations Security Council to establish an independent commission to investigate the complicity of Nigeria and Kenya government officials or their agents in the criminal in the criminal kidnapping, torture, extraordinary rendition, and with indefinite arbitrary uh, arbitrarily detention of United Kingdom citizen. Mazen Namde Kano from Nairobi to Abuja and for the establishment of a special tribunal outside either Nigeria or Kenya to prosecute the suspect identified by commission. Okay, now this is making it clearer 
to show you that what I said to you, that the reason why the first report, because this is a, another report that was submitted calling for an independent investigation to be carried out. Independent, it means that they, they have written so many reports to the United Nations. They have written so many reports to the United Nations calling on the United Nations to investigate it, which I told you that the Ch Chief Secretary uh, in the name of Antonio Guterres went to Nigeria and started advising Nigeria to integrate terrorists back to society. So instead of going there to investigate what was going on, so now that is the reason why I told you, that is the reason why they are calling on them to set up independent, did you see it? To set up independent, this is called repetition. Are you seeing here? Repetition. Of course, you can see it right in front of you, where I highlighted. Repetition. They are calling for them to set, establish an independent commission to investigate the complicity of Nigeria and Kenya government. Because probably the first one went into Atlantic Ocean by, you know, of course, uh, uh, people should be stand. The, the, the authorities should start investigating the activities of the United Nations if they are still doing what they're supposed to do. We, the undersigned, respectively, petition the United Nations Security Council acting under Chapter 6 of the United Nations Charter. VII 6, right? VII, those who, who did Roman numeral. Roman numeral. I must have forgotten my Roman numeral. VII is 6, right? Chapter. Oh no, 7, sorry. Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter to pass a resolution establishing an international independent investigation commission to establish criminal responsibility for Namde Kano's kidnapping, torture, and extraordinary rendition from Nairobi, Kenya to Abuja, Nigeria on the, about June 2021 and the indefinite ongoing arbitrary detention in solitary confinement thereafter by the federal government of Nigeria. The resolution should also establish a special tribunal to prosecute persons the commission find have been responsible for the Kano's kidnapping, torture, extraordinary rendition, and arbitrarily a detention. So, this is exactly what our First Lady filed to the United Nations. I read it because yesterday we were reading of the one that was, uh, you know, that talked about Canon Takano. But the trend, the what is going on here now is the one that our leader's wife submitted with Bruce Finn. That is the one that I just read for you. Of course, so many of you, everybody read it and uh, you understand it. So, now what, I'm, what is here to talk about this information has been on a, you know has been around since april why was it not accessible and or made available to us why was it not praised the way it started getting attention from day before yesterday I am in a meeting, I will call you back. Otherwise, leave me a message. Thank you. Do you read me? Okay, just leave me a message. I will, I will get back to you as, as soon as possible. All right, all right, thank you. So, uh, sorry for that, um, I am having a phone call. So the, 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 what I am trying to say here now is that
why is this news not trending all this while the news was made available on the public domain on april it was not trending because that was that is the same news that is trending now that is the same news that is trending now because when we find these things available in public domain we make use of them and we use them to judge the activities of those who are supposed to carry out this petition and this complaint if they are not carrying it out we will continue to remind them that is the reason why it is very important for this news to be available to be made available to us so that we will promote it and that is exactly the reason why we are on the media everybody should leave whatever that is their problem behind especially our lego team and concentrate or if there is anybody that is trying to divide our lego team they should focus and work because when you divide our lego team it means there is a you know they have infiltrated our lego team so if you people are working together working together give respect to those whom respect is due to be given and make sure you are working together in this you people are going to achieve a lot because you guys are formidable you guys has what it takes to give us a result but every time you know some of this your uh, conflict of interest is actually making things you know overboard going overboard and i am advising uh, Kanon Takano to know his um, um his approaches with this lego team and to understand also that we ipob you know mazenam de kanu is not just your brother mazenam de kanu is like our father he is your brother he is our father so i want you to understand that there is no special thing that you you know that everything that is being done for mazenam de kanu is being done by ipob not you in particular so you in everything that if you are whatever you are doing in this um regard i believe that you're supposed to you know give account to the leadership of this struggle to know your activities to know what you are doing to you know so that the information will be passed through the right channel because this thing was supposed to be promoted we start, supposed to start promoting this news from april but it was not made available to us and that is because of conflict of interest that is the reason why that information was not made available to us if eventually we did not you know even the one that our leader's wife uh, you know filed with bruce Finn, we didn't see it at all since april if i did not follow it up or search it i wasn't no one was going to know that our leader's wife is also up and running that so many of these will be telling you that where is she that is exactly what is going on because the things that is supposed to be available to us is not making being made available to us because some people believe that now they have the power because they are brother to Mazenam the Kanu. Things are not done that way. Mazenam the Kanu is your brother, he is our father, he is our leader. And until you recognize that, that we must work as the team of IPOB. Because Mazenam the Kanu was not fighting to restore the family of Kanu. He was fighting to restore the Biafra. And that is the reason why, in case if there is any move you need to make, the leadership need to be aware of it. So that we will give you the absolutely support because even if the finance that you are going to use to make this move, it is not your finance, it is not your money, it is not your family money. This is IPOB money, and IPOB money. We must give account to those who are donating this money, so that they will have the strength to donate more. It is not you working with the financial department that you call for any amount you want from the financial department and they will release it to you. You do whatever you want with it. You people, two of you, will give account to each other. It does not work that way. That is unfair. And believe you me, I am not being disrespectful, but I'm being realistic. 
because we call a spade a spade. What you are doing, it is not done that way. And whoever that is advising you is advising you wrongly. And that is the reason why I say to those infiltrators who are coming to tell us we criticize Bruce Payne. I was the person who even act, I, I started the criticism of Bruce Payne. Because you need to focus and give us results. And that is the same way. If we criticize you, you do what you have to do, we applaud you. We give him credit for his uh, latest development. We are giving him credit, but we haven't seen that result yet. We need the result. We don't need news. We need the result. That's exactly what we need. So, anything that is happening within this, about the case of Mazen Amdekano, you're supposed to, the leadership supposed to be informed. The leadership supposed to be involved. So if there is any spending, expenditure, or any anything that we warrant that you need to use money to do, if you believe that you want to fight for Mazen Amdekano because he is your brother alone, and you can do it without the IPOB as a structure, of course you use your money to do it. While IPOB, we use IPOB money to continue what they are doing. Because they are doing everything. We need Mazen, in as much as you need Mazen Amdekano out, or you might, I don't know if you did want him out, but I can't speak your mind. But in as much as you are working according to you to release Mazen Amdekano, IPOB as a structure is also working to release him. Because when he comes out, work will be made easy for everybody. All these criminals that are exploiting our people, it will not be there anymore. We want our freedom. And we know the faster he comes out, the faster our freedom comes. And that is the reason why we are all doing everything that we are doing to make sure that we protect the interest of this struggle, protect the leadership of this struggle because without the structure you cannot can you can't do anything without the structure that Mazen and the Kano created you cannot do anything on your own there is nothing you can do on your own without the structure and that is the reason why Mazen and the Kano made it clear to us that to anything the DOS say goes and we've been following the, the, the DOS we will be following them. And they are doing, you know, following orders from Mazen Amdekan. But what about you? Are you following orders from the DOS? Because this is not a family case. This is national case. It was like uh, when Mandela was in prison, you know, Mandela of South Africa. It was a national case, black people's case. It was not Mandela family case. The people who continue in the footstep of Mandela, none of the family member was in the forefront of those who made sure that everything was going according to plan. And at the end of the day, they achieved what we were fighting to achieve. It might not be the same thing that we are trying to achieve, which they achieved. But the freedom fighter was once in prison and came out to become the new nation president. And that is exactly what we are fighting. We want our leader to come out and lead us to the promised land. Believe you me, if we think about it, I don't think you want him to be released more than I do. I don't think so. If we measure it in realistic, you know, if there is any truth finding, you know, you know, you know, device that we can use, you don't want him out more than I do. And the most important thing is that he issued a directive. We should continue to follow this directive. Because the more you are doing what you are doing, you are not only dividing the house. 
you are dividing the legal team. You need to give us account of any money that is being spent. In anything that you are doing, be it that you are going to lobby, you need to make sure that the DOS knows about any move that you are making. You cannot be bigger than a structure. DOS is not just uh, Chike Rosem or any other person that is the leader there or Chia Samoru. DOS is, is a body, is a structure. And those individuals are the leadership of that DOS. Not when they make a, 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 um, a decision, you will go and counter that decision. And the same, the, do you know the reason why people are still donating their money today? And doing their monthly contribution today? It is because there is still a structure. Do you think if you are standing alone as Canon Takano, Kano's brother, do you think that you will still see people donating money? No. People are not going to do that. They are doing it because there is a structure. And that structure is something that we're supposed to continue to follow. We continue to follow that structure. Because everything that you people are doing, it is setting us back, but you people are not aware of that. It is setting us back. We need to exactly do things the right way. If it is a, if it is your personal, you know, funds that you are using to do these things, you use it and do it when it comes to fund of IPOB using it. Then you will contact IPOB leadership, and everything will be written in a black and white. That you know you have taken such amount, that you are using such amount to do this, you are using such such amount to do that. It will be written in a black and white for you know, for clarity purpose, for accountability. Because we must give Biafran's account, account of what we are, you know, you, you know, at the end of the day, you must give them account of what, how you spend the money they donated to you. Because the, so many of them called on Mazen and the Kano because I saw that even only it was carried out and was presented to the public domain that made people, you know, it made people to trust the activities of Mazen Namdekano. And that is the reason why Mazen Namdekano, no matter how much IPOB have in their pocket, Mazen Namdekano did not, you will not see that Mazen Namdekano is driving Toyota. You will not see that he is driving a uh, hand, um, Homer Jeep. You will not see his driving range or Land Rover. You didn't see any of that. Because he knows that he's a freedom fighter. Not this uh, um, backdoor uh, freedom fighters who will just rush in. And these backdoor freedom fighters, you are part of the ones, Canon Takano, that brought these backdoor freedom fighters. The letter started calling you brother killer and brother seller. You are the one who brought, who brought him. And you are still the one who projected him to broadcast on Radio Biafra. If you think about it, you will know that you have made so many mistakes and you are not actually taking responsibility <coughs> of all these mistakes that you have made. You are still in denial of you making mistakes because there is, a, there is something that you need to know. Very important. You cannot do it alone. You are nothing. You can't do it alone. Officer Mafia. Get an end to recruit our the people DOS Saki gonna this struggle. It's not the best way to do it. You can't do it alone. People are still following this movement because of the structure. They don't even know you. People like me, we don't 
And we know you exist, but we didn't know that a time like this will come when you will be, you know, the, that you will be the one that will be following the finance, taking whatever you demand money, the finance a uh, woman will give you without giving the report to the leadership. It is unfair. It is not done like that. Things are not done like that. Tell your advisors to advise you correctly. And I am not doing this in order to criticize you or to undermine you, but I am doing it because it's a reality that we need to do. Imagine this news that we we'll that we'll start seeing today. It was supposed to be made available in April. Why was it only making up being made available yesterday? Because there are people who believe that they can do it alone. People like you. There are people who believe that they can hide and do it alone. And at the end of the day, remember that you must give us account of all the money that you have used in doing whatever you are doing. It is not your money. Very, very important. That will be my advice to you. We know that the infiltrators, the infiltrators that we know, we know that they are stealing from our people. And when time is right, we are going to give our people proofs to show them that they are stealing for them. But um, due to so many security, you know, um, security reasons, we will just leave things to be the way it is. But at the end of the day, we know that they are stealing from our people. And our people are gullible by agreeing and following them because they have never showed you that they went to this place and this person they wrote a letter and the letter was responded to and the Mazenam the can will be released and or they paid a lawyer that will go and release some Biafrans who are held <coughs> captive in all the prison cells across Biafra land or even some criminals that they are using once they are captured no one is going for them they will be there of course they are autopilot autopilot if they catch you where you know you roll if they catch you you're an autopilot autopilot if you survive autopilot if you are in prison autopilot don't you see the, uh, the difference between a uh, structure and an uh, infiltrator? So, so in all these things, as an atolo, I believe that you are old enough and educated enough to read the handwriting written on the wall. I am not supposed to be talking, telling you these things, but you're supposed to know it by yourselves. So, so that you, will, you and uh, Madam Finance will, will not be the one standing alone at the end of all this. Because if you people continue in this way, you people are going. We you people are going to stand alone. And Madam Finance, I don't know if you are being emotional in your position or you have grown complacent in your position. Because, because you are supposed to be working hand in hand with the leadership, not individual. But because you people still have this mentality of Nigeria structure, it is still destroying you people. It is still affecting you people. That is the reason why you people are not aware of the right thing to do. Because you people are supposed to be under the structure if there is anything that the structure is supposed, supposed to do they are not doing you blow the whistle you push for these things to happen but you cannot just sideline yourself because you believe that you can you have the money of ipob you are untouchable and unreachable you are not because that's an abache i am going to leave this advice here i give it for free and i am giving it to all of you for free the EOS is what we know, the structure that Mazen Nam the Kano told us to follow. Kano Takano is the relative to Mazen Nam the Kano. He is not the structure, he is not the leader. Nenayanya is the treasurer, if I may put it, or finance, the head of the finance department of IPOB. 
that we know. So at the end of the day, we know those who are covering which department they are covering. Our loyalty lies with the leadership of this struggle. The structure that our father, our leader, left behind. And we will continue to follow it until our leader is released. And we are hopeful that this result or this directive issued by the United Nations will be adhered to in due time so that our leader will be released because he has suffered enough. Of course, his family is missing him. He must be released. We saw a lot of things going on in Biafra land. And, and that, that is the reason why we are calling the protest. The protest, <coughs> the protest should not stop. Just, Just like, like I said to you, and I keep saying it, anybody who will rise up to tell you that, that there will be no election in Biafra land as we are now, the order, if it is not coming from the leadership, that person is a criminal. Because there is a political revolution. There is a revolution that is about to take place from the federal level. Do, do not, not to distract it. Anybody that will want, want to tell you there will be no election in Biafra land, they have collected money. Believe it or not, they have collected money. And of course, you can see that these people don't care about you. We are talking about people protesting to end the Bubag. People are calling you to sit at home for two days. And they are bragging on the social media. And we did it. We they sit at home. <coughs> you look at these people. You look at them. When you look at them, you see the, the, the steam of their ignorance, you know, on top of their head, above their head. You see the steam of their ignorance actually evaporating. Because they are very, very ignorant. People are protesting. You are calling them to sit at home. Is that not a clear indication that you don't want these people alive? Is that not a clear indication that you don't want anything to, you know, to, you know, to make these people to be free from a criminal who puts on them, who wears a watch of $1 million and live in Abuja, leading people in Imo State, killing people, taking a less than 15-year-old child, a minor, to prison, saying that he is a, a, a girlfriend to the bandit. If she is a girl, girlfriend to the bandit, is she a bandit? These are the things that the United Nations need to think about or talk about as well. If that child is a, 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 a girlfriend to the bandit, is the child a bandit? A criminal is a criminal, not the family of the criminal. You can only investigate the family of the criminal, not to arrest them or not to dehumanize them. Because anybody that is uh, an adult... You know, there is a crime that a child will commit, you question their parents. Because they are still very minor. They are still minor. But an adult, there is no crime an adult will commit, you will question another adult just because they are family members. The only thing you will do, you interrogate them to know, you know, to get more information about the, the, the criminal. But in Nigeria, they will, they will only go ahead and they will kidnap the family members just like you know the abba kihari the, the the criminal drug dealer uh, cyber criminal police which uh, nigeria's called the, their super cop when he was there if you are a criminal you are not available your children and your your wife will be arrested and that's what they are doing how long will this thing go on how long will this thing go on? Violating innocent people for the sake of their spouse. Everybody answers for their crime. No one will answer for the crime they never committed. No one answers for a crime they never committed. If your husband is a criminal, it is, some of the, the wives, they might not know that their husband is a criminal. What are you going to do about it? You bring the wife for questioning. After bringing the wife for questioning, you send them back home and you continue to investigate them. 
You continue to investigate them to know if they indeed they are a complex. If they, you know, you cannot just judge that somebody is a complex to a criminal because they are staying under one roof. An investigation must be carried out. But this time around, this is a minor we were talking. We are talking about in Imo State. That hope who's or them who claim that he has the competency to be a chief security of a state. Who is chief security in Abuja? Abuja is more than 600 kilometers away from where Hope who's or them ma is a chief security. And he is in Abuja giving report of what happened 600 kilometers away. Are you paying attention? Because we are also now calling on the international community to see the amount of injustice going on in Nigeria. 600 kilometers away, if not more. Of course, there is no good road. If you travel by road, it will, you will travel um, probably, you know, 600 kilometers, you are bound to travel it at least at, at, at you know, if you want to, at least uh, seven hours. Seven hours. If you drive maybe 100 kilometers per hour, and maybe you will reach there seven hours, at least, if your car is not fast. But if you drive 100 km per hour, the road is okay, at least 6 hours, you will be there. But in this uh, situation, Hope Uzodema is ruling over a state and he is called a chief security. It is like a governor of California. Governor of California, staying in Washington, D.C. While being a governor of California. If there is anything that is happening in California, he will be in Washington, D.C. and give you the report of what is happening in California. Because that is what Hope Uzodema is doing. What does that tell you? An incompetent person. You are running away from people who you claim that voted you into office. Why can't Ohanes and both call for the impeachment of this criminal? This bandit you call a governor. Why can't Ohanes and call for the impeachment? And this is the same reason why we say, among all the three candidates that we saw that is talking about Nigeria, they are all criminals. They're claiming that they will unite Nigeria, they will do this to Nigeria, they will do that to Nigeria. But the 14 people who was killed in a cold blood, none of them spoke about it. And tomorrow they will tell you, it's one Nigeria, one Nigeria my fault. So all these things are clear indication that we are already divided and we can never thrive together again. We are always going to remain divided. Disintegration officially is the key to the solution to the problem of Nigeria. The solution to the problem of Nigeria is disintegration because people who does not have what it takes who does not love themselves are the people you call your leaders if you don't love yourselves because even the bible say love thy neighbor as you love yourselves since they don't love themselves they pollute the atmosphere which give them good uh, supposed to be giving them good oxygen they pollute it with generator instead of uh, you know adopting green energy or renewable energy they pollute it with generator they, they make sure that there is no infrastructural development, no hospital, that every time they have to fly on aeroplane, if the aeroplane crash, they are all gone. They don't love themselves. There is no good road that you will go, you can even, even if you don't have accident, somebody can even drive into you because he is dodging a pothole. You don't love yourself. How then are you going to love 200 million people? You need to love yourself before you extend it. You cannot give what you do not have. And that is exactly what all these criminal leaders in Nigeria are trying to do. They are trying to give what they do not have. They don't have what is called leadership. They don't have what is called love. They don't have what is called understanding. They don't have what is called education. They don't have what is called competency. They have none of these things none of them does 
But the reason why we cannot call for election boycott in Biafra land is that if you call for election boycott in Biafra land and you did not call it for uh, in Oduduwa land or Lagos or Abuja or the northern Nigeria, it means you will be blamed for the predicament that they are going to put you through at the end of the day and you are making their work very easy for them you are making their work very easy for them that is the reason why you cannot allow the evil presidency to enjoy their time and see the outcome when they see the outcome they will understand that we are on top of our game we don't need to preach to them anymore because that's an onion rock of nanya and number two there are um i heard uh, um uh, um is it uh peter Doche talking about biafra land being landlocked i'm talking about that as well I want to remind uh, Uncle Pet Edochia that uh, he needs to understand that he is old now. And that is the reason why he does not know what time is it. And I don't blame him. He is still living in the past. And that is the reason why these old leaders will never allow you to integrate into, you know, being able to innovate things that will challenge the first world country or to compete with the first world countries. They will not because they are old now. I want to tell you, uh, Uncle Pete Adoche, that having seen where well, the time we are at right now, we are in the era. At least you should be thankful and happy that you saw the era of fourth industrial revolution. I don't know if you are familiar with it. Of course, you are well educated and and the furnished in your vocabulary you know you will understand what i mean by you being opportune to be in this era of fourth industrial revolution first in the fourth industrial revolution will enable us to even create a sea a sea line are you paying attention I am also telling those who are not able to, who are still reasoning the way you are reasoning. Number one, Dubai was found in a desert. Dubai was found in a desert. Do you know a desert is a place where there is no water? I stand to be corrected. But today, Dubai is decorated with water around it. Now, for you to if your land is landlocked fourth industrial revolution made available the innovations that will enable you to do the things that you never seem to be possible before river niger we can make it a sea we can actually create things that you never imagined that they exist this is the reason why we are enjoying the fourth industrial revolution and that is the reason why i am talking you are listening in the real time it is part of the benefit of the fourth industrial revolution we never imagined that it would be possible in the last it may be in the last two decades we never knew it would be possible today if we begin to go back to the last two decades but today these things are possible we are doing it there is no limitation with a vision you know where there is a will there is a way all we need to have is the will all we need to have is a free man a, a free mind as long as we are free here the knowledge is here seek ye first the knowledge every other thing is there and for you to get the knowledge this coconut must be freed from mental slavery a slaved man just like so many of you that are already it is not an insult but it's it is just a fact many of our people 
regardless of your amount of your education you are mentally slaved somehow one way or the other I know I used to think that way when I was mentally slaved before I decolonized and now transition myself into thinking like those who mentally slaved us because they don't see limitation in anything they see future in everything but what matters to them mostly is security security is what matters to them and development of lives equality equity rather equity that is what matters to them a lot so when we begin to think about land being landlocked you know you are actually being you know you are taking us back these are old thoughts old ways technologies is all over the place innocent is manufacturing a vehicle in nigeria where there is no electricity it is possible he is manufacturing electric uh, cars in biafra land where there is no electricity there is no nuclear power but he's doing it because where there is a will there is a way all you need is determination i know what you want go for it you are going to make it very very important i am going to leave it here until we meet again stay safe stay informed bye for now